Hi there, I'm Emily Mielstein with the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council, and this is a public hearing presentation on Coastal Migratory Pelagic Amendment 29 that considers Gulf Group King Mackerel allocation sharing and recreational accountability measures. The Council has decided to address this issue because historically the recreational sector in the Gulf of Mexico has not landed its sector allocation. If you turn your attention to this graph here, you can see the recreational sector allocation is the green line in the middle of the graph, and the recreational landings is actually the light blue line at the bottom of the graph. And it's pretty obvious that the landings have not come close to the recreational sector annual catch limit. Now differently, the commercial sector has actually either met or exceeded its allocation in recent years. And that is evidenced by the two lines at the bottom of the graph. The sort of orangish reddish line is the commercial annual catch limit. And then the yellow line is the commercial landings from recent years. And you can see the commercial landings have either met or exceeded the commercial annual catch limit. So the council is considering ways to achieve the maximum benefit from the resource without harming the stock. There are fish left over in the recreational sector and the council would like to achieve this level of harvest called optimum yield. And that's basically the, the greatest social and the greatest economic benefits from harvest without compromising the sustainability of that stock. The first action in this document considers allocation sharing for Gulf King mackerel. So right now, the Gulf King mackerel stock annual catch limit is allocated so that 68% goes to the recreational sector and 32% goes to the commercial sector. Now the council would like to find a way to increase the use of that recreational sector allocation. And in an effort to do so, they recently voted to increase the recreational bag limit from two fish per person to three fish per person. Now the next thing that they're considering is this idea of allocation sharing. So for this action, the first alternative is the no action alternative, and that would leave things as they are right now. Now alternative two, which is the council's current preferred alternative, would actually conditionally transfer a certain percentage of the stock annual catch limit to the commercial sector for the next fishing year if a minimum recreational landing threshold is not met. Now you'll see there's two values that we need to define here. The first is the percentage of the stock annual catch limit that will be transferred to the commercial sector. And then the second is a landing threshold for the recreational sector. And we'll deal with that below. So uh, in this option, if the commercial sector does not land at least 90% of its annual catch limit, so if they're not going to meet their own landings anyhow, then this transfer won't occur. And also, we're going to use landings data from two years prior in order to determine allocation transfers. So to define these two values here, we're going to first address this idea of what percentage will be transferred from the stock ACL to the commercial allocation. Option 2A would transfer 5%. The Gulf's current preferred option is 2B, and that would transfer 10% of the stock ACL to the commercial allocation. Option 2C would transfer 15%, and option 2D would transfer 20%. The next value we need to define is the minimum recreational landings threshold. So in other words, if the recreational sector does not exceed this threshold, if they don't land as much as this threshold that we set, then a transfer to the commercial sector can go ahead and happen. However, if the sector does meet their landings threshold, then no transfer will occur to the commercial sector. So option 2E would set that threshold at 50% of the recreational annual catch limit. Option 2F would set the threshold at 65% of the recreational annual catch limit. And the Gulf's current preferred alternative would set the recreational minimum landings threshold at 75% of the recreational annual catch limit. So the last alternative in this action is alternative three, and this deals with the situation a little bit differently. In this case, if the stock annual catch limit is not harvested in a fishing year, then the Gulf Council's Scientific and Statistical Committee would convene, and they would consider increasing the acceptable biological catch for the following fishing year. If the Scientific and Statistical Committee recommends increasing the acceptable biological catch, then the amount of the increase would go 
to the annual catch limit of the sector that landed at least 90% of its annual catch limit in the previous fishing year. So in other words, those extra fish in the acceptable biological catch would be distributed to the sector that's already sort of bumping up against its catch limit. So we would have to determine when the Scientific and Statistical Committee would convene. We have three options here. The first option is if at least 15% of the stock annual catch limit from that year remains unharvested. 3B would be at least 20% of the stock annual catch limit remains unharvested. Or 3C, at least 25% of the stock annual catch limit remains unharvested. Now, if the council does not select a preferred alternative in these sub-options, then the Scientific and Statistical Committee would consider raising the acceptable biological catch in any year that the stock annual catch limit is not harvested. So next we move on to action two, which considers golf king mackerel recreational accountability measures. The current accountability measure for the recreational sector is an in-season closure. In other words, if recreational landings reach or they are projected to reach the recreational annual catch limit, the bag limit would be reduced to zero for the recreational sector for the remainder of the year. Now, since the council is considering some sort of allocation sharing, they want to make sure that this doesn't stick the recreational sector with a hard accountability measure if the annual catch limit is exceeded sort of to no fault of their own. So the council is considering three different alternatives. The first is the no action alternative, and that would leave the accountability measures for the recreational sector as they are. The second alternative would replace that current season accountability measure with a post-season accountability measure. So something that would happen afterwards rather than during the season. If the recreational annual catch limit is exceeded in the fishing year, the length of the following fishing year would be reduced by the amount necessary to ensure that landings don't exceed the annual catch limit again. Now the third alternative, which is the Golf Council's preferred alternative, would actually replace that current in-season accountability measure with a post-season accountability measure as well. But this one would be that if the recreational sector annual catch limit and the stock annual catch limit are exceeded in a fishing year, then the length of the following recreational fishing season would be reduced by the amount necessary to ensure that the landings do not exceed the recreational annual catch limit. So we would like to hear your thoughts on this amendment before taking final action. If you would like to read the full document, you can go ahead and click on this link. The best way to send us your comments is by clicking this link below. Additionally, you can email us at golfcouncil at golfcouncil.org if you have comments or you have any questions that you want to ask. We will be going out to public hearings on this document and you can visit our website at www.golfcouncil.org and you can go ahead and find our meeting dates and locations and we hope to see you at one of those meetings. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation and tell us your thoughts on this amendment.